Um, at this time, I would like to turn it over to Mac Curtis. He is the owner of Windview Farm, located in Port Treverton, Pennsylvania, and he's probably got the most experience of anyone in our region operating one of these systems. Mac? Good afternoon, Kristen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, basically, I just have some opinions and observations wrote down that, that I've kind of come to over the last five, six years. Um, basically, what I've done, I've, I've broke the litter burning process down into uh, three segments. Uh, litter itself, the combustion unit, and the heat exchangers, and I'll start with the litter. Uh, we do work for a company that, that uh, subsidizes our litter uh, cost. Uh, not quite. It is getting expensive, but it's still pretty readily available, and, and different styles or different types of, of litter are available. Um, I do like a blend of, of coarse and fine material, fine on top. Uh, the coarse material works uh, uh, much better uh, in the combustion unit itself. Um, and I feel that I put in, I, I don't scrimp on material. I put, I put uh, enough in so that I have a fairly dry material at the end of the flock. And I feel that that little bit of extra expense comes back to me uh, in bird health and actually BTUs in the litter. Uh, it, it's a, with a drier litter, um, I can actually move less air. I mean, your litter is, is drier, less pathogens, less bacteria, clean foot pads, less ammonia so that you don't have to move as much air. So that aspect of the litter, uh, I really do like the, uh, the clean out of, of every flock. Um, one observation I've made over the past few years is uh, some of the people that come to the farm to take a look at the combustion unit uh, don't pay a lot of attention to the litter. And that's one of the things that we struggled with uh, in the beginning was, was the material itself. We didn't know quite where we were as far as moisture, BTUs, uh, cake. And I think uh, for anybody new coming into the program, or interested in a combustion unit to burn the poultry litter, uh, there should be kind of a baseline as far as moisture, uh, BTUs in their litter, so that if they do install one, uh, they'll know what changes they have to make uh, in their litter program uh, beforehand and, and not after the project or started they're trying to burn it. Um, I guess next would be the the heat exchangers, and, and there again, my, my opinions and observations are based on uh, one type of, of combustion unit, one type of heater. I don't have any experience with, with anything else. But we have a heater, it's ceiling mounted. It's a downdraft uh, heat exchanger with a cone on the bottom that spreads 360-degree uh, air about 50 feet. Um, and to me, this works well, or for me, it works well with the standard poultry house ventilation to bring it in the sidewall up the ceiling, uh, gets up to the heater, it's heated and put back down, actually enhances uh, the typical poultry house ventilation process. Uh, some of the concerns, if you were to pick out a heater, would be uh, to pick one with a finer uh, fins because there is some dust uh, buildup in the units. Uh, I ran a, an airline down through and just have a little air compressor, typically uh, about three times a flock, and, and we're, we're on a, a 5, uh, 37, 30 a day cycle. Uh, maybe I'll blow them down three times. So it's, it's not a big, big problem. Um, the burner is the blue flame. It's a, I think it's a 2.1 million BTU. And, and I would like to say that uh, during emissions test the other day, we hit 1.84 million BTUs an hour. And this is on poultry litter. We were pumping 197 gallons a minute of 192 degree water. We were having a a really, really hard time to, uh, to keep a load on it. Um, the unit is, is an old, old chain stoker. It's simple in design. I think it's very sturdy built. It's, it's easy to operate. I, I don't spend a lot of time on maintenance or, or watching it. It has, uh, I think, one of the most important functions that, that a, a combustion unit has to have is the ability to modulate from, from a high demand to a low fire. Uh, low fire in these units is, is down to 5%. It will has the ability to modulate down to uh, a whole fire, which it'll set there all day and just um, just kind of chug along at night. Uh, temperatures drop. It'll come right back up uh, and, and do an excellent job. And, and this allows you to uh, to start operating early in the fall when you have warm days, cool nights, 
uh, and then again to, to operate into the later spring on, under the same temperature spreads. Um, other benefits, uh, I think, and I, I can't really quantify or document, but I'm convinced there are measurable bird health benefits from just from the bird environment that you're able to provide uh, with the extra ventilation. Uh, you know, the air movement, you're not building up the ammonia to get rid of that. Um, when we had the turkeys, we eliminated 95% of our fuel bill, and we were spending over $30,000 a year for propane. Um, with the combustion unit, we're able to move the pollutants out of the bay in, in, a, in an ash-concentrated form, uh, hopefully, like Kristen mentioned, uh, hopefully for a profit here at some point. Uh, the other benefits for, especially with the AI concerns now, would be it limits traffic uh, to and off the farm, especially the removal of the litter on the farm, which has to be brokered and spread on on the farm. So right now, with the fall migration coming in, uh, that's a particularly uh, big benefit. Um, the other thing I like about it is it, it protects my farm from, from future environmental regulations, which was, was touched on also. Uh, and even in that aspect, that it helps to protect my farm for the next generation uh, so this you know, it, it can continue. Um, 